All right, and here we are at level three. Level three is Grand Master level. This is where we tie in everything to be a complete defense system. Offensive, defensive. Okay? So, again, this would be like in martial arts, you're a grandmaster. Okay? Or level four, you're a 12th degree grandmaster. <laughs> So, I'll explain level four in a later video, but level three would be for most people, okay? Level four would be really high level, crazy additional features, okay? To add on to level three, to make it insanity. So, all right, we have four additional exercises in level three. We have backwards walking. We have holding the back of the legs as you move away. It could also be holding the front of the legs as you move away. Okay, so the back of the legs 
again, if you're moving, if somebody holds off on an angle to the side, the dog understands how to hold that position perfectly, keeping a direct angle on that person and being able to stay in motion with you fluidly, okay? And again, all this body touching and following of the owner's body is for fluency, fluidity, ease, okay, of all things, to be able to move easily and gracefully without any interference of the dog's body making you stumble and trip all over the place because your dog doesn't know how to move itself backwards, sideways, staying with the body, but with the attacker at the same time, which is very complicated to have the dog focus on many things at the same time when they're trying to stay in an aggressive state towards an attacker or aggressor, okay? So the first was walking backwards and holding that leg everywhere it goes backwards. Okay, perfectly. When the person comes in to attack, as soon as that person moves in too close and goes for it, the dog goes out and connects with that person quickly, right, and effectively not to allow you to be touched. Okay, perfect timing. This exercise is exactly the same, just a dog having to learn something more complicated, right? So following backwards like this is still very difficult, right? To hold that leg and know where it is all the time on a straight line and stay aggressive, but now to hold sideways, bouncing sideways, walking sideways is so much harder for a dog to learn it takes so much more effort for the dog to skip sideways, right? Or even little bits of step sideways, watching an aggressor and keeping that aggression while trying to focus on sideways moving. Okay making things more complicated than just regular walking backwards. And that's complicated enough. So the walking backwards is complicated stuff, okay? So in our system, it's not just walking backwards, okay? For a real protection dog, we want the dog to alert right and show aggression not stay quiet and follow a leg okay we want to scare somebody with that aggressive behavior right that that person would be crazy to close that distance and try to touch you without the barking right you lose the threat factor okay so a dog learning how to walk backwards, which takes their mind trying to hold that leg and follow it and stay focused to stay perfectly with it everywhere the owner goes and whatever speed the owner's going, okay? And to stay active in aggression at something else forward, okay? takes a lot of technique, 
skill and getting the dog to talk and stay active, right, takes a balance of all types of skill sets not to lose the dog in training that they don't bark at the attacker. It's very tricky stuff, okay? So everything has to be perfectly orchestrated in training and teaching dogs to do this exercise and the ones after this, right? The four on the list. Everything takes a, a whole system of techniques, right? Complicated stuff to keep everything in balance, okay? Because for a personal protection dog, yep, if he holds the leg and does all that, that's great. But if there's no threat and aggression towards that person, we're losing the effect of the exercise to scare people from ever daring engage with you in an aggressive way, okay? So that barking and hostility while holding the exercise is critical in all these exercises that I'm going to explain to you and go over in today's video that make up the grandmaster level, right? So it's keeping everything in harmony, perfectly balanced, very difficult to do. Takes a lot of skill <laughs> from the trainers to keep all this going and in harmony. Complicated stuff, okay? Very, very high level stuff. And this is the reason that you do not see these exercises when you go look for a personal protection dog to buy. You just don't see any of these things. Not even our level one, right? Our level one is beyond any protection dog company on earth with all the skills we put in there. <laughs> our level one is bigger, right? Grander, way more skill level than any company's highest level, right? So this level three for us is just blowing all those companies out of water because this takes a lot of skilled trainers. I mean, it takes a lot of effort, a lot of time, again, balancing everything. It, it, it. <laughs> so that's why these dogs are so expensive. All right, then we have even bigger, harder exercise. Sideways circling. Moving sideways away with an owner. Even harder than holding the back of the leg. So we're going in stages now, right? From difficult to very difficult, extremely difficult. All right. So now to hold that as there's a circle or just straight out sideways, to move away from an attacker, aggressor, very difficult, even harder, okay? So, since a dog has holding the back of the legs and moving in a sideways position, that would, now if you just turn the person, 
right? Instead of the owner going straight and the dog holding the back, which he's going sideways, the dog is learning how to go sideways with that exercise. So if the owner stood straight forward and the dog was here, instead of pressed against the back of the legs, now they'll go sideways straight, okay? Because they've learned how to press the back of the legs as if, you know, the owner was facing that way with them too, doing that. So the concept is there. But now to add a circling effect, right, makes it much more difficult now than just straight out or straight back with the owner sideways walking. To add a curve to that, okay? So <laughs> now we teach them how to do that and make a circle on sideways moving or moving all over the place, okay? Wherever the owner's going with that, the dogs have to flow sideways. complicated stuff to do this well to do it fluidly you know especially remember that when we're doing these things that those exercises you just saw there we just threw it out there and we didn't even know which way we were going to go or which way Michael was going to walk there with the dogs. So they didn't know. They didn't have a routine or know what was coming with these things. Okay? So we're prepping it for real life. I could move this way. I could move back this way. I could go over here. And the dogs had no idea what movements Michael was going to make there. And that's what you have to test and prep dogs for real life because there is no choreography, right, that you're going to follow in life when if you are under a real threat, it's going to be all over the place. There is no pattern that the dogs will be able to follow, right? Like, oh, we don't do that ever. We've never done it like that. So that's why you saw Michael there moving in all the different directions, prepping them in order to see if they would stay with him and follow without pattern, without the dogs knowing what was gonna happen there, okay? And beautiful, perfect. So, very difficult stuff, okay? And it make, looks easy there because we have these dogs so fluent. These are not, not easy things to do or create. And again, this is why you do not see any other dogs in the industry doing these things. And I challenge you to go out there in the world like we do when clients call us. They go, what's the difference between you and everybody else? Everything. <laughs> there is no comparison. <laughs> you cannot compare anything at any level that somebody else does to us. So we would go, hey, go, go out and look first. Go look. As long as you know what you're looking at and understand the difficulty and high level of the things you're looking at, what's low level, what's high level, what's then you, you can judge things. If you do not know what's high level or what's complicated or what's not, you'll buy a dog that bounces on a leash and just goes crazy with his spit flying and all that other stuff that's very, very, very low level and out of control and not considered a protection dog in our case. Okay, that's an untrained dog to us. Okay, so then the fourth skill holding the body, learning how to circle backwards and shield the owner from the threat.
very important that the dogs learn how to use their rears and go backwards to circle. Again, unnatural behaviors. All right, now here we're really gonna test Blitz's control and skill. Tight quarters in the hallway, nowhere to go. I'm gonna have to get around him. He's on the queue of watch. So I'm gonna have to be really tight on the owner getting around Blitz, but he cannot touch me and, or try to bite me at all while I'm there hovering around the owner. So now I'm going to start really making a lot of movements and messing with him and really trying to throw him off. There you go. I go touch the owner and right on cue he bites and does exactly what he should do. Perfect. Now, Rocco did a phenomenal job there. Now this next scenario, if the owner has him on guard and he's been protecting, we need to know that she can shut him off, stop him from aggression, and let's say she sprained her ankle or hurt her leg badly and she cannot get up on her own. She needs medical attention, somebody to help her up. That dog has to shut off and allow that owner to be helped. So this was the next scenario that we, we set up for Rocco. complicated stuff okay so now we transition over to a stationary skill now this could be done in motion as well okay but we're going to use it here in the video as a stationary because this is if somebody was just to stand still and not ever move they go i dare you try to come in Okay, there's no way somebody's getting in to touch you. So the dog can stay here if they come in forward. 
If they try to go around you, they're going to block every angle around you not to let that person in. They're not going to be able to touch you. But the dog has to learn that skill. It, none of these things are natural. It's going against their nature. Okay? So, and also the dog not only has to learn to walk backwards around, but he also has to learn how to walk forward around as well. Okay, so there's a back and forward, it has to do both, all right? To stay with that threat, no matter where it goes, forward or backwards, forward or backwards, okay? So with that timing and perfection of staying right on them so that there's no gap to let an attacker in and touch you. So that's why the dog has to be perfect with that timing Staying with them everywhere they go, not to be over here and bark. And the person comes over here and the dog is over here looking at him barking. Okay. Now the dog would have to duck his head maybe here if he's stuck on that heel. The person decides to come in and grab, the dog might be late. Okay. A lot of times it's a late attack. And you already touched or grabbed or stabbed. Okay, so that's why it's very important that the dog is circling and holding that line to cut off, not over here and looking behind it's too late. Okay, so the circling around you, back forward and backwards, very important to stay on that person and not allow a gap. Perfectly pinpointing those attacks not to let that arm come in. So all four of these things individually are taught. Then we put all those skills and mix them together so the dog has to perform all of them if necessary as one. individual to have them be able to go through all the things they learn and put it all as one exercise so that they are ready and are never thrown off in life no matter what you do it's easy for them they have this down you don't even have to do anything all right it's on autopilot now, these are highly skilled dogs, the highest skilled dogs in the world. And they got your back, right? They've got you, don't you worry. You don't even have to worry. So the moment you say watch, it now just depends on what you're gonna do. You don't have to tell them, walk backwards with me, circle with me, right? Follow my lead in the back, follow me in the back. As soon as you say watch and you turn that thread on, the dog now does all the exercises it was taught by itself on his own, knowing which skill to switch into at any moment. Depending on the way you're moving, they will adjust. 
into the exercises that they were taught individually. Putting it all together as one, okay, on their own, eventually, and it's just one smooth, beautiful orchestration, right, of the highest level dog training, obedience, protection skills in existence. Okay? So, again, individual difficult stuff, right? Each one individually and then putting them all together that the dog just does it all naturally on autopilot. It's a beautiful, magical, magnificent thing. Okay, and that is why these dogs go for a lot of money. They're very expensive and worth it. Okay, because this is an art to teach dogs. All this kind of stuff takes the highest skilled trainers to do. All right, it's an absolute art to do this perfectly well, okay? So anybody who buys one of these dogs is getting the best of the best the world has ever had to offer in protection dog training. 